Okay. Today is September 3rd, 2006, and we're on a Webster trip. For the last several thousand feet, I've been more or less by myself in the dark on my way to the Mulu Sump. Check and see if it's open. I elected to do the death march by myself so that the others wouldn't have to make the trek for nothing if it's stumped shut. I'm also doing this in the dark. There's not a whole lot to run into in Webster Avenue. I'm kind of going by feel and by sound. And I have to remark on one of the most amazing things. I kept, as I was swimming, kept seeing little patches of light in what appeared to be the froth and foam that I was kicking up with my arms and I thought that perhaps my eyes were playing tricks on me seeing phantom light I've been in total darkness for about an hour and I know some of the early Gemini and Apollo astronauts experienced seeing strange lights that were I think later found to be cosmic ray strikes in their retinas However, managed to pinpoint one of these bioluminescent uh, objects in the water, track it visually for several seconds before turning on my sten light and noticing that it was a small speck of what appeared to be white substance floating on the water. I don't know if it becomes bioluminescent by agitation. Uh, or if it's some type of organism, or if it's a chemical reaction, but I'm going to attempt to study the phenomenon further here in the dark, and I will report back later. Okay. This is Death March Part 2. Now in Park Avenue. First big rimstone formation. And on my way to the sump face, see if it's open. Uh, at first, I was moderately enthusiastic about it being so. However, there appears to be quite a bit more water Oops. in parks, just from a flow perspective. So now I'm not so enthusiastic. Another 20 or 30 minutes or so, and we'll see if we're lucky enough to get in. Well, it's mostly open. It's blowing a little bit of air, so it's not completely sunk. But I don't think we're going to be getting through it today. I'd say probably maybe in a week or two if we don't get a hurricane dump on us. We should be able to get back in there. Well, let's see, that's a six, seven, eight, nine thousand seven hundred foot trip for nothing. But at least we know. Now I'm going to make my way back out to the rest of the team. And we head to Necronome. Another mile and further in. I thought this was just a fascinating example of floodwaters. How these mud banks have been deflected into almost organic shapes like the artwork of H.R. Giger in the movie Alien. Grotesque yet somewhat beautiful.
No, it's no difference. It's one of the video takes this. This is one of the old indicators that I think we used to use for the sump. If you had water flowing over this, then if the there's sump. any water at all flowing over, which there is a little bit, or if maybe one of these holes goes dry, right, then there's a good bet that you'll get in. Right. And I think what it is is that sump is just perfectly balanced with the flow of water. Uh, that is to say, when it's when it's open. When it's normal, it's open, it's a perfect balance. If it gets just a little bit more input, it, it backs up. The hmm. flow here increases, and you can tell from a volume standpoint that it's up, but it's really not, you know, a whole lot more water. Right. But it's just enough to keep that sump shut. <laughs> and then hopefully over the next couple of weeks, months, month and a half or so, the balance will tip the other way, and the, the, the input of water will drop to the point to where it'll, it'll stay open for a little while. It's a good place for that water. Maybe. Yeah. Because uh, at some point in time, you need to learn how many inches of rain it's going to take to close that thing up if you were in here too, right? Well, yeah. That wouldn't take much. That's the point. <laughs> you need to know. <laughs> you need to have pretty good weather if you're up in there. Yep. <coughs> yeah. Accidental. Yeah. What is it? Accidental. Accidental. Yeah. I had a friend who was doing a study on those in the MSK, and he, I think they got 20 something pieces of this. Oh, uh, 12 of them have never been recorded in the video. Okay, we're in Marathon Lake. Everybody sound off. One! Hello! Sound off generally means that you sound off, you're like, one! Two! Hey, where's your kayak, Jeff? <laughs> hey, you're truly a part of the death march. Yes. Okay. So, we made it to the end of the Necronome survey. Passage is awesome. Awesome. I wish there were other six miles in the cave were like this. Yeah, I'm sure there's six miles of it like this somewhere. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Better watch my mouth. I feel like we've crawled through the twisting, turning passages. Crawled on our hands and knees for three full days. Dragging along my big... 100 pound cave pack. <laughs> 12 pound bowling ball. My lucky, lucky autographed glow in the dark snorkel. We made it. Now, how far has uh, PB been past here? Do you remember? Uh, I had a CCX for Yeah.
barely seeing the station. Yeah, there it is. One eight four. One eighty four. Inclination zero. Take that back about what I said about the airflow. I don't feel any airflow now. That's good. Four. Zero. Perfect. Zero. Excellent. That's good. And whose idea was this? Um. Well, yours, actually. <laughs>
spelling plus 1.5. <laughs> Is that the answer? That should be the answer. <laughs> okay, 1.5. Hi, Mom. I'm doing that stuff you said I should never do. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but Jim Jones made me. <laughs> Don't get the book wet. I'm working on it. I was initially trying to keep both of my hands dry, but you you failed miserably. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lee. What is that? No. Don't get the walking pen. Watch out for the skeleton. For the right.